This next story is going to be very difficult for you guys to wrap your head around. We have two twin sisters, both paralyzed in the exact same car accident, both with two different levels of injury. One paralyzed from the neck down and one paralyzed from the waist down. Now, look, as we get into this story, I want you guys to understand that these stories are made up to get more views, even more likes, or even sell more books. These are life-changing events that people go through. This story that you guys are about to hear is a life-altering event that these women have gone through. And they didn't let that stop them. Both post up frequently on social media where they detail their life after SEI injury and the journey that they're going through to get back to, you know, just being themselves. So Ashley and Nikki, I just want to tell you thank you for allowing me to share you guys' story on my channel. And they also have a YouTube channel where they do different vlogs and, you know, they just show you guys just stuff in their life. So if you could, make sure you guys go check them out. All links will be down there in the description box below. Ashley and Nikki, thank you once again for allowing me to bring you guys a story to my channel. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. I hope you guys enjoy. What's up, what's up? Oh, nice Hi. to finally meet you. Yeah, you too. I'm Ashley. Mm. <laughs> okay. I'm Kevin, if you don't know. So <laughs> nice to finally meet you. you. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Now, um, you you and your sister, y'all twins, correct? Yes, correct. Okay. Now, now I haven't been following you as much. I, I've noticed, you know, just kind of like looking at, you know, your Instagram and your sister's Instagram, that she's the one that's kind of, I would say, like, um, she posts a little bit more than you, or do y'all post about the same? No, I would definitely say she for sure posts a lot uh -huh. more than I do. I post a lot in my story. Okay. Same. I need to. Yeah, I'm more of like a silent lurker. Like the posts okay. are not really my thing, but I definitely am like okay. a story person. Mm -hmm. You don't know what I can relate because I post all day on my story and I'm I'm trying to get to the point where I'm posting on my actual like Instagram. Like, but I, I don't know. I, I guess I'm just I'm picky a little I'm picky about what I put out there. Yeah, right. I'm my worst critic. So I feel that. And mm -hmm. I know it's like more people would see your story if you had more posts because of the way the yeah. Instagram algorithm works or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's just annoying, but I just, I'm yeah. always been more of a story person. So I feel you mm -hmm. there. Yeah. And like you said, I could definitely relate. You are like, you're your biggest critic. All right. Like I've been, I've been to the point where I was about to post something and I didn't post it and I just totally forgot about it. Never posted it and just forgot all about it. And you know, and mm, not that it's, it does suck. It does suck a little bit. It does suck. Cause yeah, you, you know, back, you're like, that was actually a really good post. I should have posted it. Yeah. Yeah. So you still could have used the throwback Kev. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. You too. You too. You know, you could do, a, um, I feel like when it comes to this life in the wheelchair, you know, you and your sister, y'all doing YouTube, you know, I, people need to see this. All right. And I, and it, to be honest, you and your sister have two different vantage points, you know, because y'all have two different level of le levels of injury. So, so like y'all can relate to a lot of people because I feel like, I feel like for somebody who's paraplegic is, I feel like quadriplegic is kind of like a different world to us. You know, but your sister is, you know, she's thrown into the mix because of you, you know? So it's just like, she has a lot more insight on what I would have insight on. So I honestly like really don't know much. So everything that I'm actually about to learn is about to be from you. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. no. mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so I'm, so I'm definitely going to be listening. All right. Because, you know, it, I'm curious about things. I'm pretty sure the viewers out there, they're curious in, you know, outside of the people that's just curious, there are going to be people out there that are listening to this for information. They're listening to this because they need to see, you know, how you do things, you know, how you go about things, how you and your sister go about things, you know, and they're going to get that information because they, they, they absolutely genuinely need it. And it's not just a curiosity is they need, they need it. And that's why I do. That's why I do these videos because even though I don't want to, I know it's somebody out there that, that really needs it. And the more I do it, the more I want to do it. So, so, you know, the information definitely needs to be put out there. And like I said, just, just you sharing anything can be helpful for somebody. All right. 
Okay. Okay. Now, before we get into you know everything that happened, you know, tell us a little bit about you. Who was Ashley before her accident? Like, did you have any hobbies? Did you play any sports? Like, just tell us about you. Okay. Okay. So Ashley before the accident. Mm -hmm. I feel like people are always so shocked because of how different I feel like I am now. I actually have a YouTube channel. Okay. All the videos are private now, so nobody go look. (laughs) What? They're private? Yep. All the videos are private. I had a blog. Oh, oh, for real? I love to write. I've loved to Mm. write since I was like seven years old. Mm. So that was like my hobby slash work field. Both because I loved it so much. Mm -hmm. I had actually lived in Kansas City, Missouri. Okay. Right before I had just moved back home right before the accident happened. Okay. So, and when I lived there, I. I lived there, so I went to school in Missouri as well, in like mm-hmm. a really small town in Missouri. Mm-hmm. Um, and I actually went to school for broadcasting. So again, you know that's like ties into the YouTube. What? You know what I'm saying? Okay. It's like very, yeah. like people are always shocked because I'm yeah. amped with it. Um, but um, I went to school for broadcasting and journalism and all that, and then was living in Kansas City. Okay, worked in sales, mm-hmm. waitress, all you know, all that fun stuff, mm-hmm. all the fun after college stuff. Yeah. And did a couple blog blogging, mm-hmm. like you know, freelance blogging mm-hmm. work, and then okay. had my own like blog, and then that's mm-hmm. when I lived in Kansas City is when I started my YouTube channel. Okay, it's like that was like what I did for fun. Mm-hmm. Love going to concerts. Okay, love music. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? Like little things of me. That's like what type of music do you like? All types. Okay. I would say ones like where you're yelling but i would definitely say my favorite <laughs> i uh, love pop okay love r&b okay um i don't know what genre it would be but i always like call it like the vibey music where they're like dancing you can like dance to it you know mm-hmm. like, style mm-hmm. maybe like edm type or like um... yeah i do like some of that type of music too. i do too i do too mm-hmm. okay so what so you said that you moved to missouri for school, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, why did you leave? What made you leave? Like, 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 was it that you just kind of wanted to get away? Or, you know, was it a, you know, a particular school that you was wanting to go to? What made you leave the city that you was originally living at, which is Chicago, correct? Yes. So okay. I was born and raised in Chicago mm-hmm. all my life, right? Grew up with my twin sister and... Yeah. For me personally, Chicago Mm -hmm. just never, like, like, I love it here. I love my city. Chicago girl through and through. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But I just, I always felt like the need to, like, leave. I love to, like, travel, see new, like, places, things. Mm -hmm. That was always just on my mind. So I had actually, didn't even really want to go to college. One, I feel like for the field that I love, broadcasting, you need experience. Like, Mm -hmm. college helps. Don't get me wrong. I learned a lot. Yeah. But, like, I could have probably, you know, gone to college for, like, dabbled in a couple classes and still learned <laughs> the same thing that I wanted to learn and like then yeah. really got experience but mm-hmm. the reason I wanted to go away was because just to like leave Chicago and like experience that first mm-hmm. time like living away from the city that I knew yeah and, and then to being a twin mm-hmm. growing up going to the same school you know looking the same yeah. having like similar friendships because people always mm-hmm. know you're your sibling I wanted to finally like have my own identity, like figure out who I was without being tied to my twin sister for one. Okay. And okay. that's what I felt like I got in college. Like I never referred to her as my twin. People mm-hmm. were shocked when I first met her and were like, oh, you have a twin? I was like, yeah, because I always was like, that's my sister. Yeah. Because oh, I really okay. just wanted to be my own person and like see who yeah. I was without like, and then for me personally, like Nikki was always the more, she's more talkative. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm more like reserved and like mm-hmm. keep to myself, mm-hmm. like be alone. Yeah, and so I feel like I was always like in her shadow. I was like, people never got to see me because mm-hmm. Nikki's personality is a little bit bigger than mine. Okay. So college, I guess, was like my time to find myself, figure out mm-hmm. who Ashley was. Yeah. Without you know, I think I think that's for most people. You know, mm-hmm. I think most people that go off of college, you know, you know, they're they're becoming a young adult, and you're right. They want to find their identity, like they, you know, they outgrow the city that they probably grew up in. Because I knew, I knew, I knew that for me, like I knew that this city was never going to be big enough for me. I had to get out of there. It was horrible. I didn't, I didn't want to, I didn't want to be running into the same people. Didn't want to be dating the same people. 
No, I, like I need to go far away from that. And I could understand where you coming from just always being associated with your sister. Now that's because that's why I, I asked about doing the interview separate because when I first thought about it, I was like, okay, yeah, they're twins. All right, bet let's do it together. Right. But then I really thought about it. I'm just like, they're not the same level of injury. Right. Like n- no injury is really going to be the same, but you kind of tie it in because you, you two are twins. So that's mm-hmm. why I was like, you know what? Let me see if they will want to do it separately. And the way how she wrote me back, like she didn't say it, but I can tell she wanted her own video. And I was like, that's exactly why I asked that question. Because yes, y'all are twins, but that don't mean that y'all want to be associated. Like as far as everything, like, all right, you know, let's throw them in just one video, you know? So that's why, th- that's why I asked the way I asked. So. And I like that because I feel like since we've gotten injured, of course, you know, we got injured together. Yeah. Both spinal cord injuries. So mm-hmm. we kind of been forced, like we, our stories back together. Years it, it, of like living separate lives. Now we're like mm-hmm. back together again, <laughs> which is like fine, but I still like, it makes yeah. me feel like, damn, am I my own person? People forget just because we're twins. I'm still a separate person. Even though yeah. we have similarities, just mm-hmm. like friends and other siblings, we're also yeah. different people. Exactly. Exactly. Trust me, I like, and I didn't want like I wanted to say that, but I didn't. I I I, I guess I didn't want to say that at the same time. It's like you know because you said that you you know uh, that you moved away because of that, and then it's just like you know y'all y'all both end up in wheelchairs. So then it's like you kind of both being thrown back into it too. Now y'all both got a YouTube channel together. So so mm-hmm. I didn't I didn't, like it's like I didn't want to say it because then. That it mean that you think about it, like I don't know, like I, I don't know. I just felt like it just wasn't appropriate to ask. But since you said it, is you, you answer my question without me even having to ask. So, okay, so, so you said that you ended up moving back, right? Correct. Yes. What made you move back? Honestly, just like missing my sister, oh. missing my family. Like here, I always a good thing to like say like Chicago has always been like my family oriented mm-hmm. place. Okay. And Kansas City because I had went to college out there, yeah. and then I had like people that I knew from college and just like friends that also lived in mm-hmm. Kansas City. Was, like my my social circle, social circle out there. Mm-hmm. And I guess I was just like missing my family. I was missing my sister. Mm-hmm. Like I want to spend more time with her, and just and I had always known that Kansas City wasn't where I wanted to stay. Like forever, yeah. it was just kind of the first stepping stone to like see if I could leave Chicago. Mm-hmm. So I was like, let me move home, maybe stay there for a year or two. Okay. And then I really wanted to move someplace warm, like California. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So, you know what? Like, to be honest, I never, I never thought about moving to California before. Like, like until after my accident, like California was always in my mind because I lived on the East Coast. So it's, a, it's, I ain't gonna lie, growing up in the South, it's a lot different than growing up anywhere else. All right. It, you literally stepping in a little, like a little time machine. All right, it's it's not like it's not like the rest of the world. All right, so just Where did you grow up? I all right, so I grew up in Virginia. Well, I was born in Virginia. I lived there till I was fourteen, but I literally consider myself growing up in Georgia because you know that's where I like. I feel like I feel like that's where I became a man. That's why I experienced a lot of the things that I experienced for the first time, like going out and like different stuff like that. You know, I experienced all that in Georgia. I didn't experience it in Virginia. So I consider myself really growing up in Georgia. So that's where I grew up. Yeah. Uh-huh. I, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, I love it. Like, but I just, after going other places, like different states and out the country and stuff like that, it's, yeah, I like, like, I would rather live somewhere else. So, you know, but like I said, I never thought about this because it was always like the rich the rich area where all the rich people live at, and you just don't think it's affordable or anything. Are you in I'm LA, California. What happened? Are you in LA? No, uh, uh-uh, I'm in Bakersfield, so I'm about like two hours from LA, which is is not bad. The drive isn't bad. I make that drive all the time, so it's not bad at all. Okay, okay. And yeah. How long have you been living out in California? I've been living out here for about like six, seven years. Oh wow! Six, yeah, I love it. Like I love it because. Like, I feel like a lot of the things that the people who grow up here get to experience growing up, it's like, we only get to experience that sometimes. It's like, it's a highlight us going to the beach. They can go to the beach 
all the, on the weekends, you know, during the summer, you know what I mean? It's right. everything. So yeah, everything's so accessible. And then everything that California has to really offer is, is, is really nice. You know, like the different parks and, you know, like, I don't know. It's just I don't know, everything. Like, I don't know. I just like it. I was like, it's big too. You know, you can, you can go, you can go see snow. You can go see some desert. Like it's, it's, it's all, yeah, it's crazy. It's, it's big too, you know? And, I feel like there's lots to do there, lots of opportunity there for sure. Exactly. It, you know what? You, exactly. Well said. Because that's what I noticed. It's just it seemed like when I first moved here, everybody here was really just trying to. I don't know. They were trying to get to something. Like <laughs> you know, everybody was trying trying to get to it. And it's like you could kind of see it, and it's like, ooh, I like that. I want to be a part of that. <laughs> you know, so yeah, I like yeah. it though. Mm. There's always something happening in Cali. I feel like. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you still want to leave uh, Chicago? Oh yes, I would actually okay. like to move to Cali. Oh my God! Oh, what part? Probably like near LA or like. Okay. Or honestly, just because like I like nature too, like um, Phoenix, Arizona. Ooh, it's hot out there. I've never been to Cali or Arizona. Okay. This is going down some things I've heard that I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. I would move there, but that's how like I'm kind of like spontaneous in that. Mm-hmm. Of life, I'll try anything at least once, but you can always leave. Yeah, true, <laughs> true, exactly. And, and you know, I think that's where people don't. I think that's what a lot of people don't realize. Like they're scared to, they're scared of change, and then they don't realize that it's okay to fail. All right, mm-hmm. it's not okay to give up, but it's okay to fail. All right, mm-hmm. it's okay to okay. try something, realize you don't like it. Exactly, exactly. You never try how you know. Correct. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Okay. So, getting into the day, everything happened. All right. Because you say you you moved back to Chicago. How was your day going that day? Was you having a good day, bad day? You know, was there anything out of the ordinary uh, that you would say that you felt or anything? I would say for the most part, it was pretty like regular day. Yeah. Me and my sister decided to hang out. Mm -hmm. And. Just have a sister day after she was working, like at the yeah. bar. I'm sure, she told you all that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we were just like, oh, let's just like hang out, chill. But it was like a regular day because it was a, yeah, it was the weekend. I'm pretty sure. I think it was a Sunday. Okay. So it was a weekend. So literally, we was mm-hmm. just I spent most of the day like getting ready and waiting mm-hmm. for my sister so that we could hang out later. So okay. Like nothing really out of the ordinary. That's not the ordinary. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, now. With as much as you can say, because I know it's some legal stuff going on, with as much as you can say, what recollection do you have of everything that happened? So for me, I don't really remember anything. Okay. The accident itself. Okay. And then even when I was in the hospital, I don't still like, didn't really like come to. Mm -hmm. I would say, I don't really know why, probably just because I got, you know, being Mm. drugged up from all like the pain and I'm trying to keep you alive. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Now, can you say like like what the accident was like as far as like what happened in the accident? So it was a car accident. My okay. We were ejected from the vehicle. We were the backseat passengers, mm-hmm. and we flew somewhere. I'm sure it was on the highway here in Chicago. Yeah. So he hit like a ramp, and I think like we flew off. So. Oh, um, so y'all flew off the freeway. Well, I don't know because, like, you know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm pretty sure, like, he hit it. So I can just assume that we probably, like, if we were to fly out of a vehicle, we were probably off, like, the highway or something. Or in the grass there, you know, like how highways Mm -hmm. have grass outside. We were probably in there. I don't know. But Mm -hmm. I do remember that. I've seen, like, the news article where you see things happening. But Mm -hmm. when I really just, like, came to, I just remember being in the ICU Mm -hmm. and, like, kind of realizing, like, Okay, so so you just remember all the way up until the accident, correct? Yeah. And then, and then from there, you don't remember anything. Yeah, and then from there, I don't really remember much until, like, I came to when I was in the ICU. Mm. I think, like, the first thing I remember is, like, one of my cousins talking to me. Okay. Now, from the time that the accident happens to the time that you wake up and I see you, how long is that? I would say it was probably... Everything feels, obviously, I feel like everything feels longer than it actually was. Mm-hmm. I feel like spinal cord injury, we, we're, we recover pretty quickly, but also mm-hmm. pretty slowly. Like, yeah. And so I feel like it was only probably like a week 
Mm-hmm. But in my mind, it felt like it had been like a month. Mm-hmm. So like by then I was already at rehab. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I know it was in a month. But mm-hmm. when I came to, I feel like it was just like a week. Yeah, you know, all the doc. I do remember like the doctors would come in because I was very like I couldn't move when I was mm-hmm. first in the ICU. I was pretty much just like like this, laying on the bed. I had mm-hmm. a treat. It's my scar. Yeah, um, I got the same one. Okay, treat homies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I was on a ventilator too. Mm, okay. So I was tied to like that. And that was uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, and then at the, when you first get injured, they have all the pillows underneath you because they're like mm-hmm. trying to make you get pressure sore. Yeah. Your body's like staying put. Mm-hmm. So I remember that. But I just like remember feeling because, you know, like when you're in the hospital, this is the thing I thought about hospitals was that okay. the reason I couldn't feel anything or the reason I felt so weak was just because, like, oh, yeah, you were hurt. You were in a car accident. So, yeah, you were hurt. But, like, mm-hmm. you're going to go to rehab and you're going to get stronger and everything's going to start working, like, normal again. Yep. I just felt like I had to get strong again. Mm-hmm. Like, at the time, not thinking, like, oh, you're paralyzed. Like, your fingers mm-hmm. are going to stay like this. Your mm-hmm. legs are going to stay feeling, like, 100 pounds. Yeah. Like, it was like, I was like, oh, no, you're going to get stronger and everything's going to be back to normal. You just got to mm-hmm. gain that muscle back. Yeah. Um, and I I feel like that's, what, that's how most of us feel. Yeah. You know, because I... You know, like I've talked to so many people and it just, it feels like that they don't really tell you anything about really what's going on until you get to therapy. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like that was the same thing for you you, because I thought the same thing. All right. You know, like, you like they kind of tell you, oh yeah, for people where like they lose sensation, it normally comes back, you know, if it's going to come back within 18 months. So you're thinking in therapy, I'm all right, but I'm about to be doing this for 18 months and then I'm going to be back and. It, you know, it don't it don't end up like that. So, trust me, I, I definitely understand it, and I definitely understand too when it comes to you know waking up with a trach and you know being on a, a ventilator because you know I went through all that. I'm pretty sure you had a feeding tube in too because because mm-hmm. of the trach, so you couldn't drink or eat anything. You know, for as long as you had that in, correct? Right. No. Yes. So trust me, I I definitely understand. How long was you in the ICU for? I was in the ICU until. For like about a month and probably like two weeks. So mm. nice. oh, okay. So, so, nice. so was you in and out of it the whole time, or was you was you aware? I would definitely say probably in ICU. I was pretty like at first pretty out of it, just because like all yeah. the drugs they have you on. Mm-hmm. But afterwards, pretty aware. Besides, I did go under, and I forget what the surgery is called. But mm-hmm. I would go under where they would put something in your throat. Yeah. So that they could check on like my lungs because I did have a collapsed lung too. Mm, They were like kind of, and I had pneumonia as well. So they were kind of Mm. trying to, and I have asthma, which asthma I've had since right before my injury. So they were Mm -hmm. trying to make sure that like my lungs were, you know, what they needed to do. And I Mm -hmm. would do that surgery quite often. And when they would do that, they would put me to sleep. So that's when I would like kind of feel a little like out of it again for a few days. How many neck surgeries did you go through? Only the only neck surgery, well, I guess the two, I guess, would they consider okay. the neck surgery would be that mm. one and then my spine. Okay. And then, okay. but that was about it. That was the only thing I broke in the accident was my spine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so you actually kind of answered it a little bit. So the next question I was going to ask was in the accident, what all happened to you as far as like injury wise, you know, like, like what injuries did you like, I guess, receive from the accident? So for me, the only injury that I received was my breaking my spine at the C4 mm-hmm. vertebrae level. And then like other like little parts, like mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure in my doctor notes, it's like T1, T6 that I have like yeah. a little piece of metal there too. Mm-hmm. But those, that was the major one. And then like my lung collapsed, but that I think mm-hmm. was due to like trauma. Yeah. So okay. but other than that, everything was good. My makeup was still on when I had came to. I used to get mm-hmm. my nails done. They were all still intact. For real? Yeah, my hair, I Oof. my hair not naturally straight. My hair was mm-hmm. still straight, like it wasn't really messed mm-hmm. up. It just had some dirt in it. Yeah, like I was like really like wow, like it's really my neck that tore me up from the floor up. I didn't have any other scarring. 
For real? Just, one just store I had when they had like moved me to therapy was mm-hmm. a store that I got from them not moving me in the ICU. Mm-hmm. So it was like, Damn. I literally have no type of scar. And mm-hmm. then of course, you can get the scar from like your friends mm-hmm. that are trying to save you, the feeding tube and the trachea. Exactly, stuff. exactly, exactly. Now, let me see because you know what? Let me. Let me actually do like pressure relief too because I seen you move a little bit. I was like, you know what? I, mean? I know like, I move a lot, and I know and like I look probably like I'm have hella anxiety, which I I mean I do that too. Mm-hmm. But I also just get very uncomfortable. If I don't yeah. get into it, I'd be in pain. <laughs> no, nah, look, trust me, I definitely understand. I look, I be moving a lot too sometimes. So it just so happens that you know doing these videos, I gotta kind of stay in the camera in the right. camera view. So I, like I gotta kind of like stay in the same area. But no, nah, trust me, I definitely understand because I'm I'm always moving. I'm always moving. All right. So, okay. So, you said that the only injury that you sustained was from your spine. Now, mm-hmm. when you wake up for the first time, I, I would say, like, what, what can you feel and what can't you feel? Okay. That's a good question. When I first woke up, mm-hmm. I don't think that I could feel anything. Cause I, like I said, I was just moving there, like, mm-hmm. I, was, I was just laying there. Yeah. And I couldn't move anything. I couldn't even, when I had first woke up, I couldn't even move my neck. Because mm. they had said I should have been paralyzed from my neck down. Like, I shouldn't have been able to move anything. And so, like, mm. I literally couldn't move. I had a neck brace on mm-hmm. because, you know, the trach and the yeah. neck. And I was just, like, there. like. Mm-hmm. And then I don't know when the day happened, but at one point I was finally able to turn this way. Mm-hmm. This my what side would this be? The left side of my neck is able to like turn more than my right. Yeah. So my injury is kind of weird. I think my spine was like severed like diagonally. Mm-hmm. So my right side is weaker than my left side. Okay. It's like a weird thing, and like I notice, yeah. like if I'm transferring this way, it's easier, and this way not so much. Yeah. But, like lifting up on so, like my. Being a quad sometimes, I'm sure you want to even a pair, I'm sure it's like, mm-hmm. depending on the way your spine breaks and everything can like affect. Mm-hmm. How you do things. Oh, like, I know it's oh, weird. Tr- yeah, mm-hmm. trust me. I, I definitely understand because, you know, even when you said, you know, it's an easier transfer from this way than it is from that way, I can totally relate. I got a way I like to transfer every single time. And like, I don't know, like that's just the way I do it. And I'm pretty sure that's because I'm probably stronger on that side you know, so I definitely can really relate. And I'm pretty sure that there are other, you know, wheelchair users out there or SEI people out there that really can relate. So I trust me, I definitely understand. I definitely understand. So, okay, so you said that you that you you could barely move now. Could you move your arms? No, not at first. That oh, was like kind of happened over time. Okay, they started having like the I I don't know what they go. They were PTs and OTs, but they're just yeah. Through the ICU units, yeah. so they're not as intense, not as serious. Mm-hmm. They would come and like help me, like literally be like lifting it for me because I couldn't do it. And yeah. I guess like over time, it naturally like I was able to do it myself. Mm-hmm. I remember actually the first. I do remember this. This could be a story I tell you. I do remember mm-hmm. the first time I was finally able to move this wrist. Okay. This was the first. What whatever side it was. I'm pretty sure it was this side. Mm-hmm. I was like laying there, you know, in my. I have you all. Mm-hmm. Check up, and I was like, finally, like lifted it up, mm-hmm. and I got so happy because I, at the time, I didn't think like mm-hmm. I thought that I was gonna be a pair. At the time, like I thought disability was just, yeah, people can't walk, and that's that. But mm-hmm. their arms still work, their fingers still work, whatever. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, my fingers yeah. are starting to work again. My fingers are starting to work again. Mm-hmm. Well, f- we'll come to find out that would be a lie later. But mm-hmm. I was so happy that I like did something on my own. Yeah, like this. Trust like me. a little glimmer of hope. Trust me, I understand because I know, like, I could barely move because, like, all the pain, like, you're in all the pain, and then like they got you hooked up to so much stuff. It's it's just like yeah. I like just sitting up in the bed. It was just like I did it. So trust me, I like I I could definitely understand because I, it was a point in time I was just happy to be able to sit up on my own. So. So just just like the smallest thing when you can't do it, just being able to do it for the first time, like I I understand what an accomplishment that feels like, you know, because you know like you're going through this whole trauma situation and then you know it's just like 
don't know. You just get like a glimmer of hope, like you said, kind of, you know? Yeah, you're it's, like, okay. Yeah, you know, so like you want to be able to figure this out. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And then, like, you start to have a better outlook on things going for you. Like, all right, yeah, maybe I can do that. All right, because you be thinking, like, you know, oh damn, I gotta learn all this stuff, and it seems impossible, but you know, like, it's not. It's not. So. And I remember because, like, for me, I feel like a lot of when I was in the ICU, a lot of people were keeping things from me mm-hmm. because, like, I couldn't talk, I couldn't like really verbalize like my yeah. feelings and my emotions, and then I couldn't move. So, like, yeah. I feel like, and then I had you know my sister who was doing like a little bit better, but you know, still dealing with her shit. You mm-hmm. know, she has spinal cord injury too. Yeah, and. I feel like a lot of people were keeping things from me and mm-hmm. I was only feeling things versus like if it was versus like how my sister's recovery was going. And I was like, yeah. I wish she told me how my recovery was going to go, which is going to mm-hmm. be much different than hers because mm-hmm. she's a paraplegic. Yeah. I'm a quadriplegic and we have completely different. Yeah. Level of interest and everything. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And it was making me kind of confused that I thought that's why mm-hmm. I was like, I thought that my hands were going to work again. Actually, yeah. Another story, when my sister came to visit me one time, we were mm-hmm. holding hands, all cute, and I had, had I couldn't talk at the time because I was still in ICU and still mm-hmm. on the ventilator, but I had told, like, I was like, I can't wait till my hands are like that, mm-hmm. like, mouth back to hurt. Yeah. And she agreed. Yeah. She agreed. Till this day, I say she's fake for that. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, at the time, I understand, like, she didn't want to tell me, like, Mm. that's probably not gonna happen Nate, because they had already told her like that i'm a quadriplegic so she already knew mm. but i did it yeah or i knew like you know they were throwing out c4 but like i didn't know what that meant yeah and it's like if you don't yeah. really know anything about it you're not exactly you're, you're not gonna know what none of those terms mean yeah and you i know. couldn't like, i couldn't pick up a phone i could really lift my hand so i was like i couldn't even mm. research any of this stuff so I'm just going on based off of what other people are telling me and like, mm-hmm. like they were trying to protect my feelings, but I needed yeah. the truth. <laughs> yeah. Now, now, do you think looking back on it, do you think that that was the best idea or do you think that they should have told you? I mean, it's like, I could, so I knew I was paralyzed. Okay. I knew that. I guess I just didn't know the extent to the paralysis that I was. Okay. So it's like, they were telling me the truth, but kind of, but I feel like that was even like, that's family, friends, that was doctors too. Like, mm-hmm. Because I feel like there was just a lot going on. So they're like, yeah. at that time, you know, they're worried about me even just breathing. Mm-hmm. Because I was um, desatting a lot. Like every time they would try mm-hmm. to get me to talk or try to wean me off the vet, I was like, no, not my time right now. Mm-hmm. So I think they were just worried about like making sure that I even made it before yeah. telling me about the extent of my injuries. Mm-hmm. Okay. So. I mean, I, don't I, them, I feel like I understand where they were coming from, and then yeah. I don't even know if I would have been able to handle all of that at the time with everything mm-hmm. else that was going on. Yeah, yeah. Trust me, um, I could definitely relate too. You know, as far as you know, getting out them ventilators, like you know, it'd be time where you know I would tell them, you know, like, and this is like me fresh off the ventilator, like I would freak out, like because like you feel like you're not getting enough oxygen. You know, like you're sweating and like, and like you're telling them like you can't breathe, you can't breathe. Then they check your oxygen levels and they say like 90 something. You're like, that got to be like false. Like, you know, so I can, I definitely can relate because it's just like you're learning how to breathe all over again. And that's pretty much what I had to do. Yeah. You know, the it, it, exercises. <laughs> it, exactly. The blowing in the tube with the little ball. Like, and like just anything that I did, I was just covered in sweat because it, it was like the hardest task. So... Trust How me, long can... have you? Because I've actually never met like a para that was on a ventilator. So why do you mind me asking why you were on a ventilator? Or why you because, had to... because they had to take my lung out. So oh. and then I also had the trait too. So okay. so so like whenever whenever the bullet went in, it it hit my lung and then it hit my heart. But it hit the it hit the sac around my heart. So it, it did like so it hit like a protective layer which could easily be taken out. So it hit that and then it like rest it never hit my spine, it just rested near it. And I guess the force from the bullet just pretty much just crushed it, like collapsed my spine. And that's and like to me, to me, when like and like it pisses me off because like, like now I'm like about to talk about it. It was like they told me, yeah, it's cause like you got the swelling, and like I'm thinking that the okay, like the swelling's gonna go down and then 
you know what I mean? I'll be able to walk again because they're saying, yeah, you got swelling around that area and that's putting pressure on your spine and that's what's causing you not to walk. And, you know, come to find out I got some broken vertebrae that they never told me about, you know, and I'm thinking like, all right, bet the swelling going to go down. I'm going to get my legs back. Like everything going to be good. Yeah, it won't like that. It won't like that. So trust me, I definitely I definitely can understand. But then I can understand to them not telling me because maybe I can't handle it at the time. Yeah. You know, so I feel like everybody everybody's in the know but you. And it really makes you feel like an alien. Like it makes you feel like just cut off from everybody because literally like it's like it's like you you know, but you don't know at the same time. Yeah. And if it, you can't talk, you can't even ask the right questions. Exactly. You gotta, you know, to get somebody attention, you got you know yeah. that's what I was doing. You gotta write it down on the pad. Like, you know, like shit, like I mean, if you see my Instagram, you see how much I like to talk. Imagine having to be shut up for like three weeks. <laughs> you gotta do a lot of writing, you know? Yeah. Like once I could lift my arm, like yeah, so. I spell out the words for them. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Can you just understand what I'm saying, please? Yeah, exactly. And then and then it's like, damn, like you really find out can't nobody read lips. It's like none of y'all know how to read lips. I feel like I can read lips good. Like nobody can read lips, it feels like. It's right. like uh, it's like I'm telling you that. Yeah. So trust me, I definitely understand because it was it, it having to do that, it was I feel like that was the worst experience because they had to like clean out the trait when they and like yeah. it would mine was always like clogged up and I would never want them to clean it out because it felt like they had to like shove it in there, like do a little circle motion and it was it was like the worst pain or feeling that I've they would have to switch it out. Ugh, nasty. I hated that. Now, yeah, and they came in there and cleaned it every day so it like burned a little bit around it. You yeah. know, so I and actually then, what's funny with that thing, this is how you know mm-hmm. like freak. I have a scar. Yeah. Not from a surgery, strictly just from the trach like thing, like you know, from all the turning and how oh. long I had it on, just like it digging into my skin. Mm. So, okay, because somebody asked me this question the other day, and I didn't even know that this was a really a thing. Did you having a trach affect your voice at all? Yes, I feel mm. like it did, and I definitely okay. like in the hospital it for sure did. I feel like I I've always had a very low, like soft spoken voice. Yeah. But I definitely feel like my voice is a lot softer now. Mm. And then I was a mm. singer. Um, I like to think that I was a singer before my accident. I okay. loved it was in choir and stuff like that. Fun, fun, fun. And mm-hmm. I definitely can tell when I try to sing that my voice is a lot like softer. Okay. So I definitely feel like it affected my voice and that. But I, then I also, at the same time, I don't know, maybe it's just like breath control that I start to like talk a little lower because I'm like trying mm-hmm. to save my breath. Mm-hmm. Now, 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 do people around you say that you talk different or do you feel like it's just you that feels like that? I feel like that might be a just me. I would just have to you. ask my sister, see if she thinks my voice is like more softer. Mm-hmm. I definitely can't okay. yell the same. I know when I try to like yell, like mm-hmm. trying to when you start, you know, trying to argue with people, mm-hmm. I can't yell. Yeah, <laughs> I do notice that, mm-hmm. and maybe that's when I notice it in my singing. I can't belt. Mm-hmm. That's a good way to put it. I can't belt anymore. Okay, okay, all right then. You as a singer, okay. What's your favorite thing to sing? Like, do you got a particular song? Like anything? Like I don't know. Like who's your favorite singer? Oh, my favorite singer. Oh, see, you've been, you're going to, it always changes, but currently it's Justin Bieber. Okay. He can sing. Okay. I love, I love me some Justin Bieber. I'm a believer okay. through and through. Okay. <laughs> okay. Seeing him in concert next month and I can't wait. For real? Okay. I've never seen him in concert. Okay. That's what's up. I love me some Bieber. I love Russ. Mm, Russ is a good singer. I like Russ. I mean, all these rappers. I don't be rapping. <laughs> I, I, I can pretend, but. Mm-hmm. Um. But I don't know. I like to say I like to sing some R and B. Okay. Yeah, I feel like. Well, I ain't yeah. a singer, but I like to Kailani, sing. Kailani, I love singing along to her. Okay. That's I like what's to up. Like her, even though I don't. But her voice is so beautiful, so I pretend. <laughs> okay. If you want to sing something, you can sing something. Oh no no no. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Okay. All right. Now. All right. Now this is. Mm, if this is personal, trust me, I understand because I felt some. It, if, I feel like if anybody would have asked me, it may have been personal to me at the, at the time. Now, not not probably not so much. Now, when you was in the ICU, how was that experience as far as like in the nighttime? Did you did you have that 
hear that traffic of people coming in and, you know, families coming in and finding out maybe like their loved ones didn't make it because for me, that was like the worst, the worst experiences when it came to the ICU. Oh, wow. You would hear stuff like that? Yes. Like I would hear people coming in there screaming, like, and like, you just know that their family member didn't make it. You know, it, it, it was like, it was, yeah, I had some rough nights. I felt like I had some rough nights up in there. Wow. See, I never yeah. heard anything like that. Thankfully, it was pretty quiet in my room because they would close the door. Mm-hmm. And we had, like some like, I think they were like glass doors, but you couldn't hear anything outside unless they would like crack it open. But I never heard anything, any other, I did hear a scream once. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure they were my neighbor. Mm-hmm. And I think they were also like either spinal cord injury or stroke or something. And I think they were just like screaming because they were in pain. And yeah. that like scared me a little because I was like, what's going on? Mm-hmm. And you heard like the beeper yeah. going off. Everybody mm-hmm. running to them. But I'm sure I scared yeah. a lot of people because the beepers went off in my room quite a few times too. So mm-hmm. they literally yeah, I... when I left ICU, all the nurses and like people all lined up and like clapped for me. That's how long for I was real? in ICU. They were ready for me to go. Mm-hmm. And I'm over here like, bye. <laughs> was you ready to go? Oh yeah. I was ready to go. And I I think that's the only reason they didn't want to let me go because I kept um desatting and wasn't able to get um off the ventilator and they were mm. like they were dead set on me going to rehab, not on the ventilator. Mm. And what does that mean? What did, you said desat or desag? Yeah, desat. Okay, what's that? It's basically so that's just the word. I don't know exactly. So I'm I think it's like a medical term. I don't know. Okay. But DSAT, it basically is is when my oxygen levels would be very low. Mm, like okay. every time they would try to take okay. off the ventilator, yeah. instead of me like saturating at like a 98, I was saturating like probably like a 50, 60, like not mm. a good level. And they yeah. didn't want to do the rehab because they were like, you're not going to be able to do, you know, the ventilator does prevent you from doing certain workouts. Yeah. And that full recovery, they were like, we don't want to send you there and you're not going to get stronger. Mm-hmm. In my mind, I'm thinking maybe if you send me there, I'll get stronger and I'll be able to get off of this. Mm-hmm. At one point, a doctor, like, I think had that same idea and yeah. they ended up moving me to rehab. And okay. I was still on the ventilator. Okay. Now, when you finally get to rehab, is your sister already there? Yes. She's already there, but she's on a different floor. Mm. At first, because when I first went, I was in the MACU, which is where you're like more heavenly monitored because I was yeah. on the Okay. So for the first, that was only for the first three days, though. Okay. And then I got moved to the same floor as my sister. Oh. Which was just by luck because they do have two spinal cord injury floors at the rehab Mm -hmm. we were at. So I just got lucky that we were on the same floor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Now, now, at what point does the ventilator come out? The ventilator comes out. I go back to ICU in May. Okay. End of May to get it taken out, and then the trach comes out in June. Cool. I remember getting mine taken out. Ugh. It sucked. No, I remember me. that day. I call it my birthday, yeah. June fifth. Very yeah. important day. Mm-hmm. Finally got I my eat- voice back. Huh? Exactly. It, well, well, I still had the hole, so I didn't get yeah. it back that day. It took like two days. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, now. Um, you don't know what? Now that I look back on it, like right after I got it taken out, I was like, okay. It wasn't as worse as I thought it was going to be getting it taken out. Was it bad for you? No, it actually is more just like a little bit like uncomfortable. It is. Like when they kind of take it out, it kind of feels, <laughs> it just sounds so gross. But it kind of feels like a little like slimy. Like you're kind of like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. No, trust me. I, ew. Ugh. Trust yeah, me. I, I can, I can relate. It's giving me shivers down my spine. Yes. Yes. You, 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 what's crazy is that not many people can really relate to having the trait in like because a lot of people i've talked to mostly everybody that i've talked mostly everybody that i've talked to did not have a trait in so I it's know, we're rare yeah so it's, even it's, a lot of yeah. clubs i talked to didn't have traits for real yeah like it's it's really just like if you can't breathe that they give that shit to you <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah it's a life-saving life-saving technique mm-hmm. you know that, that's what that's how they get oxygen to you like super quick they so, so, you know, but but I think that's something that that it has to be signed off on too as well, right? Correct, because you can lose your voice. So like your dad or somebody probably had to sign off on it, right? I don't know. Apparently, I've been told that they had me signing off on everything, and I don't remember signing anything. Whoa. So like, when? 
That's weird. Apparently, I was like conscious. I guess I was talking to people. I don't remember any of that. I'm like someone that's like traumatized and as drunk yeah. as I probably was should probably have not been signing nothing. What? That's kind of <laughs> crazy. Okay, so they're saying that once you got to the hospital, you was somewhat conscious enough to give some type of say so about the care about techniques to help you out. I guess, like apparently, when I first went to um, the hospital, I was talking to people. Oh, do you remember that or no? No, see, I don't remember any of that. But my dad said I was like asking where like my purse was at. Like, where's my stuff? Mm -hmm. And then out of nowhere, it's kind of when I, like, I would say desatted, like my oxygen level went okay. Okay. And then the trauma hit because I I really don't know. I I would be curious to like hear like a doctor's perspective. Yeah. And how that all went down, but mm-hmm. and that's how that's kind of how I was able to learn a a couple things like that. One of my vertebrae broke instead of some stupid swelling was because I had to give like I was doing something, so I had to give all my I had to like get them to to get my medical records, so I had to sign off. So then they was able to go through my medical records, and when I got there and we started having the discussion about whatever we were discussing. He told me about everything that happened, and it was like, no, you actually broke some vertebrae. I'm like, what? So, like you said, like once I spoke to a doctor about it, they reviewed my medical history and the paperwork. I was able to find out what happened. So, yeah, yeah. So that's definitely understandable. Okay, so you get the trick taken out now. Now you're doing therapy with your sister, right? Yeah. So when I first get to therapy. I'm mm-hmm. doing it on the different floor. Okay. For workouts. Then they decide to that I'm strong enough to have only be on a ventilator at night. Mm-hmm. And be able to have that cap. Did you ever have the cap where you're able to like talk during the day or just talk with the caps on? I don't. To be honest, I don't remember. I don't remember. It was it was a fun little journey. I always said like when they would take it off, they were like taking my voice box away. Mm-hmm. But I, but I can definitely understand because I remember because I don't remember the cap, but I remember covering the hole to talk. Yeah, it was basically the same thing. It was just like so that way I didn't have to do it because mm-hmm. I would just be rolling around all day, like able to do yeah. therapy and stuff without being on the ventilator, which yeah. was nice. And that's when I was moved. Once they decided that, that's when I was able to move down to the mm-hmm. same floor as my sister, and then okay. that's when I started doing more intense yeah. therapy. I would say. Yeah. And. Getting to see my sister and mm-hmm. start to learn how to talk again. Mm-hmm. Start doing a swallow test. Yeah. Which was kind of weird. I don't know. Did you? they have you doing a swallow test when you still had the trach in? That's a weird feeling. Mm-hmm. What was you eating? Or like, what was they giving you? Yogurt. and. You're right. They did. Yes. Stuff. Yes. Yes. That's crazy. I never thought about that. Terrain. Yes. I did <laughs> have to do that. Yes. You're right. You're right. <laughs> No, having this, even just like you, like having this conversation is reminding me of all this stuff because I feel like it was so long ago, even though it wasn't, yes, but it kind of was. Yeah. And, and, and like I said, no, I feel like nobody got a trach. So it's just like, you kind of lose that because you just forget to talk about it or like you, like the only thing you talk about is a trick, but you can't really like share, like, like they can't relate. So it's, it's like. You know, it's just it's just not relatable. But like you said, like this, even the swallow test is just like I totally forgot all about that. But I I definitely had to do it, and it's just crazy the things that you got to do as far as like recovering from having a trach and to even having a trach because you can't eat while you have a trach in. Yeah, you know, like they didn't want me to eat or drink anything because they didn't want me to catch pneumonia. You know, so it's. They want to be able to like cough everything up and mm-hmm. so all the medicine I'm getting, all the liquid medicine, they're shoving it in the tube that's in my nose. So it's like I'm getting everything I'm getting is through my nose. The oh, the well, for me they did everything through my my stomach, the feeding tube. What? Yeah. That's crazy. Okay, so damn. I've never heard that. Mm. I've never I've never heard that. So was it because Okay, now if this is TMI, trust me, I understand. All right, because but but for me, for me, they had to cut me open and open me up. How was that for you? Like, did they? Because you said you had a feeding tube in, so did they have to cut you open and open you up? Like, because me, I got like the exploratory scar where it's like we got to get up in there, let's open them up. 
No, I would say my scar is like pretty small. It's kind of like my Drake scar. It's probably like smaller. Mm. Like it's, I think just a little, a little. Okay. Yeah. You know what? You know what? You yeah. You're not really gonna have it because they're not looking for any bullets or anything like that. So it it, oh. it definitely it, it yeah. It, you know, but but I have seen somebody that was in a motorcycle accident. And he got he got pretty much the same scar as me too. So that's the only reason why I asked. Okay, mm-hmm. so you pretty much just got your surgery. Your surgery scars and then from the feeding tubes and stuff? Yeah. Okay. Basically. Okay. okay. And then the one from the IVs, but yeah, uh, it's small. You can't even really see those. Yeah. They heal up. They heal up. So trust yeah, me. I was worried because I have where they had mine, I have a tattoo. Okay. And I was so worried that the scar was going to mess up my tattoo, but it didn't. It's right next to one of the thing, one of the tattoo mm. places. Okay. Okay. Kind of cute. Yeah. Kind of a story to tell, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And look, it, um, if if you need to go, you can go ahead and let me know at any time. No. So, all right. Nikki was rolling over here being nosy. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, now, when you get to therapy, how long does your therapy last for you? Therapy for me. So I went in April and I left um, in June, like April. late June. Okay, so I was there from April, May, June. It's like two months, right? Two, three months. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Half. You know what? I think I was in there about the same amount of time. I was in there about the same amount of time. So, okay. Well, it, it wasn't too bad. Your sister probably got out way faster than us. <laughs> you know, but. Yeah, he was out. Yeah. He was already home, like, even for our birthday, because they let yeah. me come home for my birthday. Mm, okay. Yeah, okay. Now, you know, the first moment you get into a wheelchair, what's that feel like? Moment. Or do you even remember it? I don't like have like a mm-hmm. straight memory of it, but I do remember yeah. my first time being like being put into a wheelchair was not until uh, mm-hmm. a rehab. Yeah, and I do remember it was you know it was a power chair. It was a big okay. yellow chair. I do remember my first loner chair. She was nice. I liked her. Mm. Um, but I feel like I at at first I just remember everything being so uncomfortable. Yeah. It was. And like everything feeling so foreign. Like what is going yeah. on? Yeah. Like I felt like I felt like really in the first stages of like being injured, I felt like I was like watching my life. Yeah. Like, is yeah, this it does feel like that. Or am I dreaming? No, nah, trust me, I like trust I I definitely can relate too. Is it it doesn't feel real. Mm-hmm. Like it just it doesn't feel real because you know, unfortunately for most people you just never think it could be you. You just never think that, oh, I'm going to be the one to end up in a wheelchair. You mm-hmm. know, it, and yeah, you just don't think it could be you. Yeah, so. you wonder. I never thought to. I always thought that disability was like something that happened yeah. maybe as you got older or exactly you were with it, but I never thought it was something that could happen midway through your life. Exactly. And like, you know what? I feel like that that's, that that's really what most people look at it. Like, you know, like your sister said that, you know, she always thought people that were in wheelchairs were sick. Like most people think that people in wheelchairs are just old. All right. It's only old people in wheelchairs. So whenever they see you parked in a handicap, sometimes some people might say something to you because you're young parking in a handicap when it's just because their perception of people in wheelchairs are older people. Yeah. You know, like like me and Cassandra have gotten called out for parking in a handicap. A lady just yelled at me for parking in a handicap, but I'm trying. But uh, yes, but I'm I'm getting out the car at this time. Like so, like she's yelling at me. She's yelling. I told her I left because on on my car, uh, I was in the process of getting the license plate, so I only had the place card. But I left the place card in Cassandra's car. But as this lady's yelling at me, and we going back and forth now, I'm literally taking out my uh. Mm-hmm. My my wheelchair, but as I'm taking out my wheelchair, she's turning away, right? So, she, I don't even think she ever saw the wheelchair, but but I'm telling her, I'm like, I, I'm like, I forgot it at the house. She like, yeah, sure you did, and it, 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 like, it was it was the weirdest experience. But you know, I mean, I could understand where she's coming from, but like, if she would have just gave me the time to listen to me, I feel like she would have really. You know, and just yeah, and yes, you would have. She would eventually saw the wheelchair. Okay, people, man. I know, right? I know, but but at the same time, I like we get it because yeah, we used to be, used to be that person. 
Yeah, I just needed to be educated. That's why it's like, I yeah. know I like to call out people's ableism, but I'm not going to be mad mm-hmm. at you if you're willing to be educated and unlearn yeah. your ableism. Yep. Yep. So, be okay. I, yep. I definitely understand. Okay. Now, throughout your whole, I would say, like rehab journey, what do you feel like was the biggest obstacle that you had to overcome? Or like, I would say like, 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 this was like the biggest thing that really, it just, it took it, it, it took everything out of me, but you know, I did it and like, I, I'm just grateful for it at the same time. Honestly, the biggest thing for me was learning to adapt mm. with my limited hand function. Okay. Because having hand function is a game changer. Yeah. Like for a long time, I couldn't pick up my phone. Mm. Like, okay. I couldn't like pick up a water bottle mm-hmm. pick up a straw even yeah. to put in my water bottle mm-hmm. so that was always very frustrating ot therapy was always very frustrating yeah like realizing like wow i have to do this a certain mm-hmm. way mm-hmm. and i used to do um the block test yeah so see how fast you're starting to be able to pick up things and then with mm-hmm. my hand function one stays in a fist mm-hmm. and then this one like has a little bit more like i can move it like that but mm-hmm nothing really and okay. so it was like training two different injuries mm, oh, how to train for yeah. this side how to train yeah and you know, that works like this mm. and it was just very frustrating and yeah it took a lot of like trying to accept that okay this is going to be your new life not being able to do things the same not being able to open jars mm. or close too tight because yeah. i don't have any sort of grip so I would say that was the most frustrating part, but mm-hmm. over time, I definitely feel like I've learned different ways to adapt to my lack of hand function. Mm-hmm. And, and I just find little moments to be proud. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're right. You're right. And let me see. You're right. You got to find moments to be proud of yourself at what you can do because, you know, like I talk with some people in... I try to just say, you know, you just got to be grateful for what you have because, you know, somebody doesn't have what you have and somebody also has more than what you have, you know, and you just got to be grateful for what you have because I look at it like, you know, I would rather have whatever I have and whatever I'm dealing with than be in a box somewhere. And, you know, that's one thing that I was grateful for, but it took me a while to realize that. It took me a while because it's just like, you know, you know, you never really think, oh, it could be you. You know, and like like I said, like it's just you're just unaware of spinal cord injuries. Like you're just unaware of that whole world until you're pretty much thrown in it, and it's really in the blink of an eye. Mm-hmm. So, okay, so okay, so when you when you finally able to leave the hospital and your sister's at the house, like like what does that feel like when you get home? Because like, is it a little bit easier knowing that? You know, like, you're going to have your sister by your side, too, at the same time? Yeah, no. It definitely, I feel yeah. like having, like, having a, my sister get injured with me, mm-hmm. I feel like we're able to, like, talk and, like, understand each other on a yeah. different level because yeah, we both do have spinal cord injuries, so we understand it to a certain extent. Mm-hmm. But then it's also, like, harder because I do have to watch my twin sister also go through it. Yeah. So not only am I dealing with, like, the mental effects, but I have to see my sister go through that as well. Not mm. only am I struggling to transfer out of bed, I have to see my sister struggle to transfer out of bed. Especially when we first got yeah. home, we were like so weak and mm-hmm. still not strong enough to do a lot of things on our own. So yeah, it was like, wow, like I, I'm watching her struggle and I can't even help her. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because I can't yeah. even do that myself yet either. Yeah. So I think, but it was also nice because it's nice to just like be with her. But it was nice to have her in rehab mm-hmm. too, like. Yeah someone there all the time instead of being alone mm-hmm. you're right and and then also also you know it, when it comes to being in a wheelchair you learn patience all right and yeah. you know you you really learn that you'll find a way you'll find a way it might take you a little bit longer but eventually if you stick at it you will find a way you know and it's yeah. just it just it's just all about trial and error and finding out what works for you. Cause I'm pretty sure 
You got a way that you like to do things. You know, you just found out what you like. You found out, you know, what you can do and it works for you. You just got, you just got to find out what works for you. And, and that's what I try to tell everybody because everybody think that things are going to be the same where, you know, I try to tell people no transfer is, is the same. Every transfer is different, you know, you, but, but it's on mm-hmm. you to know the necessary step to, to where you make every transfer almost the same, almost identical as the last one, okay. you know, that's but so <laughs> yeah, exa- exactly. Exactly. As long as you got a hundred percent success rate, you're good. All right. <laughs> we ain't trying to fall. So, you, you know, but you just got to find out what works for you. All right. And it just takes trial and error. It, it takes some time. It, it takes some time, you know, it's especially, especially with us, because I know some things it, it took me forever to really get the gist of like when it came to, I, w- I would say when it came to Balka and when it came to Catherine is it was something that I just, I just, I just couldn't wrap my head around it. And it was the big, it was the biggest, it, I don't know. It was, it was a real big problem for me. It was a real big problem for me. So, you know, but, but I found a way and, like I said, you stick to the schedule, you should be good. Right. So I'm still trying to figure out the mm-hmm. latter part of it all because mm-hmm. now, okay, okay, now since you say that, do they have you on any medication for your bladder? They did when I first mm-hmm. got injured. Um, they had okay. me on on both of them on the oxybutynin, and then that mm-hmm. one was working, so I did mirabetric. Okay. But my body just gets used to it, like. Okay. And so, honestly, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this on your YouTube channel, but you good? Marijuana you good? Helps, helps like calm those bladder spasms. Mm. But even then, it's like I still am voiding on myself. So let's figure okay. out the solution to the problem. Mm. Okay, you see, all right now. Okay, wh- how often was you taking the oxybutynin? That was at first they had me on it like twice a day, and then they lowered yeah. me to once a day. When I was, my body started getting more used to it. Okay, now when you say your body started getting used to it, was it working for you to where, like, you, Catherine, was like every every like four hours, or whatever? Like, was that working for you? No, it wasn't. I was still, like always, okay. that's why I always wonder if the bladder thing is the one thing I won't ever figure out because mm. I feel like I go through weeks where I won't have any type okay. of like accident and then weeks where it's like that's all I'm doing is just constantly like needing to be like okay I gotta change again mm-hmm. okay now because I spoke to somebody before and I didn't know that this was the thing but they said that I think it's like steroids and like like you get like an injection of oh yeah what is that Botox or something yeah. I don't know if it's Botox mm-hmm. it, it's Botox have it you is- tried that or no I haven't tried that yet I would I don't know I always get scared stuff like that like especially because it's just so unnatural mm-hmm. but at this Some, point, I'm for anything the person the person that did it said it worked for him okay i don't you know said, if, i know nikki did it nikki she didn't did really, she only did it once my sister okay. okay she did it but she only did it once she didn't remain consistent with it but i know it didn't work for her when she had for like got mm. the first injection but i wonder okay. if she had it had she like remained consistent? Because I think mm-hmm. it's supposed to be like every six or nine months or something. Yeah, he he did say that he had to get it like every few months, but he said that he got it and he, he said it worked for him. So I, I was just throwing that out there because those are the only two things that I know of. Because I know some people that's not even on anything, you know. So you know, I'd be kind of I'd be kind of curious about that. But I don't know. Like that's what I try mm-hmm. to people. Like I try to give people the information that I have, and I try to just tell people what I do. So I mm-hmm. take oxybutynin once in the morning. And once at night, and that pretty much works for me. But and I mean, I, I, I had surgery. Oh, where it kind of make it like reroute it to your stomach. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you get a leg bag. Mm-hmm. But we'll see. I actually have a bladder appointment this weekend, so I'm gonna okay. Talk to some of other options there. Mm-hmm. You know what? And two, and then it's trial and error when it comes to that too. It really it's, is. Yeah, it's annoying, but it part is. of my life. <laughs> it is. Look. I'm human with you. I have accidents too. It's, it's, trust. So it's, sometimes, sometimes I, I get to the point where I go through like a month without having one, and then it seems like every day, back to back to back to back. It's like what? Okay, let me. Do I got a UTI? I go. I go. I, I go. Set up an appointment. So if I got a UTI, no UTI. Okay. Or I'm like, what's going on? So I'm trying to think in my head everything that I might be doing differently or something like that. And 
I got it narrowed down to one thing, and that's a heat. I be using a heating pad sometimes. So I think it's that the heating pad kind of like does something to my bladder to where it just throws it all out of whack. So I try not, I try not to use a heating pad. It relaxes well. it. <laughs> too much. Too much. And you did say that marijuana, that marijuana helps you. Now, marijuana is it, it kind of hurts me because if 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 may, maybe I don't got a cat, but I kind but I kind of got like some urine in my bladder. If I cough, it might come out. All right, it might come out. So, but I would say one thing that really relaxes my bladder is CBD. But you gotta so maybe CBD might work for you, but because I know what I do, I I, I know for a fact because I tried it. I tried it before because I just want to see what it does to my body. But that CBD must really relax my bladder because it just lets everything out. I do not know what is up. It just, you do a couple little drops and I don't know what's going on. It just, I cannot stop having action. So maybe it might, it might help. Maybe that might work for you. I would try the CBD, but, but you got to do like the, it's like the, the one with like not that much THC in it. Is yeah, I can't it's remember. CBD. Yeah, it, yeah, it's like I, I forgot the little tinctures, but it was like seventy dollars for this little bottle. But but that was like was a couple years ago. Oh hell, oh yes, they are. So it's trial and error, you know. But it does suck though. Trust me, I can relate. I like I understand. Trust me. Okay, okay. So whenever you get at the hospital, you get to the house. What's that feel like when you get to the house? Because I know from talking to your sister, you moved back in with your parents, right? Uh, yeah. How was that? Um, it was interesting. Um, mm-hmm. I had, you know, like I said, I had moved back home from yeah. Kansas City, so my room was upstairs, and mm-hmm. so now it was just downstairs. Yeah. And I don't know. I guess it was just like weird, like just being home, different, same but different environment. Mm-hmm. Moving around it differently. Our ramps in the back, so I don't yeah. really ever leave through the front anymore. Okay. And I don't know. It was like my room was a mess when I came home. Like the new room that I was gonna be living in. Mm-hmm. It was just. It was very overwhelming. Yeah. Um. That's great. You know, I still was like, my house is very. We have a lot of like doors and like turns. Mm-hmm. So still getting used to that. Being in a power chair, I was pretty reckless. Yeah. Hitting a lot of things. I'm always hitting things, right? And I'm not even in it. Look, I'm t- my walls have a line going across the whole house because of how much I hit everything. Every door, every door has a scar. All right, <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a, at the bottom because I'm like, you know, I don't know if I'm rushing, but it's just I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna hit stuff. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's know, like it's, normal. It's, like we can't help. It's my it life. Sometimes. Yeah, it's my life. Uh-huh. It's my life, so trust me, I I could definitely relate. And then I didn't really think about it now, but we really can relate as far as you know. For me, I was I was living in a totally different state at the time. I was living in Colorado, so I I had to come back to my parents' house in Georgia. So it was like I'm just being thrown into like I'm just being thrown into now. I'm living with somebody. I got the I got the spinal cord injury. I'm living with somebody. I'm living with my parents. You know, and it's oh, it was. It was tough, so I could definitely relate when it when you know it comes to moving back and stuff like that. So I lived it. Yeah, it was that was overwhelming in itself, you know, because mm-hmm. it's just, it's like it's like it's like you move out and like I don't know, you get a, like a level of independence and then it's all just gone. Like, yeah. Like now, now, like you feel like you're depending on everybody now, and and I would definitely say I was pretty independent <sighs> before. Yeah. My injury, mm-hmm. so like I have to rely on people for like such. <laughs> such small things. Yeah. Having to rely on people for such small things is like it's a different yes. a different type of humble. <laughs> it's frustrating too. Hella it frustrating. It's it's frustrating when it's frustrating when before your accident you wasn't that person. Mm-hmm. You know, I never like to ask people I don't like to ask people for anything really. That and that's one thing that I'm really loving about doing these videos is that sometimes I, I i'm asking people hey do you want to come on my podcast and it's really out the normal for me and it's just like i like like i don't know it's like for some reason 
I would never ask anybody probably for help, except my parents or something like that, for anything else. But when it comes to this, and like it's like I'm asking y'all for help, I feel so comfortable doing it. Like, and but I feel like it's kind of getting me on my comfort zone a little bit too, because it's like I'm kind of having to ask people for help, kind of. And I don't know, I like it. I like it. I it doesn't feel the same. It doesn't feel the same. Okay. You know. I feel like it's for a reason. So just me asking you and your sister, like I had a little hesitation, you know, because I think I wrote on your post, right? I think, I think so. And then your sister replied. Maybe. And yeah. So like just me doing that, I had a little, little hesitation. Like, I don't know if I should send this, but then I sent it and look at it. We're on the podcast right now. So. Right. Yeah. Right. That's crazy. That's crazy. Now, now, <laughs> I hate to ask this because I'm only asking you because I feel like because of your sister, but like when it comes to your whole rehab and you know, you getting back into the swing of things, like were you curious at all about like people with spinal cord injuries? Like was you ever looking it up on YouTube or like looking yeah. anything up? Oh yeah, for sure. I okay. right away wanted to know okay. about um, other quads. Yeah. Like, where they were at because I was mm-hmm. like I at first was really like I'm not gonna be able to do nothing yeah. like mm-hmm. with this body that I was just okay paralyzed with okay. and one of my therapists told me about Laura Beck mm-hmm. um someone told me about you walk I glide about Steph okay those were kind of the first like quads I had saw Jordan Bone you know the bigger mm-hmm. the bigger name ones mm-hmm. and then through that I started finding other people in the spinal yeah. cord injury community. Yeah. Um, and then having my sister, mm-hmm. she's finding people in the spinal cord injury community, <laughs> and so yeah. I'm just finally able to see all these different people living life in a similar body type and a similar yeah. way of living that I'm gonna probably have. Mm-hmm. That was hella inspiring. And then early on in my injury, I was actually able to meet Laura Beck. For real? She, uh, yeah, but she came to Chicago and oh. to kind of like you, I randomly messaged her she didn't follow me at the time nothing and i was like you're mm-hmm. gonna be in my hometown explained my story i'm newly injured i would mm-hmm. love to meet you that's and what's she up actually <laughs> for real that's what's up that's what's I up was able to meet her and it was and she was with another quad for real and we all met that's up dope. and had dinner and it was really 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 nice because she was she was the very first person and probably like the one mm-hmm. that like really like i saw her and i was like okay you're gonna be able to do this yeah Okay. You're gonna figure this out, and then also, I don't know. Are you aware with them? Um, Roll with Cole and Charisma. Mm-hmm. He was one of the first guy quads I came across. And okay. I love his story. He makes mm. me cry all the time. Yeah. Because like, it just inspires me. Like, okay, Ashley, you're gonna figure this out one day. Yeah. You will. one way or the other, you're gonna figure it out. You mm-hmm. will. You will. And you will know it, it. It is a beautiful thing being able to see, you know, different people with similar stories you know similar levels of injury you know and you're really able to see them overcome from where they started at as far as like with this SEI journey you know so I wish I wish at the time YouTube was a a lot bigger platform when I got paralyzed because for me I didn't really have anybody because I got paralyzed in 2012 so it wasn't really too much information out there and by that time I would say by the time I started getting my stuff together, as far as like mentally, then I started looking up different things. You know, I, I I got curious. I was I wasn't doing some things that I wanted to do, and I came across somebody named Paralyzed Living, and I just learned a lot of things from him. So you know, I, I you know what's so crazy is I always talk about him, and I always talk about how you know like like really detrimental he was to me learning certain things and I've never reached out to him or even thought about reaching out to him. But now that I think about it, I'm about to reach out to him today. Yeah, do it. Yeah, I'm about exactly I'm about to reach out to him yeah, today. No. <laughs> exactly. And like I don't like like I don't know. It's just I don't know. I don't know. I I don't know. I've never reached out to him, but I need to reach out to him and tell him how inspirational he was to me as far as like when it came to certain things. And I need to tell him thank you. Yeah, I hope I, you like get to meet you walk I glide and like tell her how yeah. Oh, you know, how inspiring she was to me early on in my injury. You know. And all the other people. Tough. There's so many mm-hmm. people that I wish I could meet. Yeah. Paras exactly. and quads. Just to like tell them like keep mm-hmm. doing what you're doing because you inspire mm-hmm. me. Yeah. I mean that's partly why I decided to start sharing my story on social media. Because I was like, if mm-hmm. these people are inspiring me so much by just mm-hmm. putting themselves out there, even if it is even if they're not trying to be influencers, they're just like yeah. sharing their story. 
I'm like, okay, I can do that too because it's gonna help one person. Yeah, that one person is me. It's gonna help someone. Mm-hmm. And that's what I tell people. Mm-hmm. I tell, and like I told your sister, like I tell everybody is, and I feel like you kind of maybe lose track of it a little bit because you just think, all right, your Instagram sc- subscribers or your Instagram. I mean, I mean. Your YouTube subscribers or your YouTube subscribers. It's not really like Instagram where you can really go on their profile and see, you know. So you you don't really think anybody who subscribed to your YouTube channel is really in wheelchairs unless they say it now. But for me, it's just like I feel like I just had people watching me. But I mean, I had people viewing me, but I didn't know I had out of paraplegics, quadriplegics. I didn't know that they were actually watching. And I didn't know people were learning things from the videos that I was putting out. And to really start doing these videos and honestly be able to talk to some of them and have them tell me, yo, like I, I found your videos when I was in a hospital. Like the first thing I looked at was how to drive and your video popped up. Like to, to really hear that it, it like, it meant everything to me because it only really just solidified that what I was doing was, was for a purpose bigger than me. All right. It was bigger than me. And that's, and that's what really I realized whenever I started doing it, I was just like, you know what? I don't want to do it, but I know that it's bigger than me, but to see it actually benefit somebody or hear from somebody that it benefited them is just like, I don't know. It just, it just, it let me know that what I was doing was, was correct. Exactly. You know, and, and I'm pretty sure that the other YouTubers that you follow, and I'm pretty sure you probably have already felt that way with, 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 you know, with some of the stuff that you didn't put out on social media to some of the stuff that you and your sister put out on YouTube, I'm pretty sure you've already felt that, you know what, I might have been a little bit embarrassed posting it or filming it and posting it, but somebody wrote you and told you, man, like this, this man, my day, I was going through this and this and that. I'm pretty sure you already didn't felt that because yeah. like, like some people just, some people can't post it. All right. So to be able to post it, I commend you on that. Like, like for over like that, th- that's really big. Just posting up your story. <laughs> huh? I could post more. Yeah, e- e- You but know like, what? I'm, I'm like the little I am doing is helping. I mean, I have people in my DMs all the time. Exactly. The I'm posting that I'm like, okay, you're, you're helping people. Mm-hmm. And that's what I mean by you probably already felt that with just some of the things that you post, people are out there watching. All right. Like, like there are other wheelchair YouTubers. It's, it's crazy because when I started, I felt like I was the only one. I felt like it wasn't nobody. Like, I, I, and it, I felt like I tried to hide it. So, not that I tried to hide it. I just, I never really harped on it too much. I just, I vlogged my life just as my life was going, but I really didn't talk too much about the wheelchair. I was just vlogging, you know, but, you know, people need to hear this stuff. All mm-hmm. right. And, you know, yeah, they, they do. And I didn't realize how many people really just, wanted to share their stories too like some like sometimes you sometimes it's very therapeutic just just letting it out you know and i don't know that's really how it was for me it was like once i shared my story it just it was like a weight was lifted off my shoulders and i don't know just talking to different people having some people relate it was just i knew that all right again i did i what i did was it was bigger than me, so. Yeah, you were helping someone. Yeah, so. Someone's perspective. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, so you say you and your sister be doing YouTube. What y'all be doing on there? So we do a lot of vlogs, like you okay. see. And actually, at first, it was just her channel. Okay. Um, and then this year we turned it into like Ashley and Nikki's channel. Okay. And it's been a lot of vlogs. Do we also <laughs> have? Like Kind of like your YouTube, kind of have like a little bit of like a podcast style thing mm-hmm. that we do where we just talk and we're just trying to educate and normalize disability. Yeah. Because okay. <laughs> I can dig it. Yeah. And then put ourselves out there, be that representation. You know, I'm yeah. not like I, like we were talking about earlier, I'm pretty like private, don't like mm-hmm. really my face on the social medias and mm-hmm. like putting myself out there too much. But mm-hmm. I do what I can. Mm-hmm. With what my energy and my mind, yeah. you know, my mindset lets me, yep. because I'm like I want to be that quad representation because there's not a lot of quads out there. No, like, like I you, wish I saw more people, more quads too, and then more quads and power wheelchairs. Mm-hmm. But like you don't see that often because people are so like set on like I mean they wanted me even when I left rehab to yeah. leave in a manual wheelchair and I was like dead set on like no the power chair gives me more independence. 
Mm-hmm. Like maybe the manual works for people that have more support, but I don't have that. So yeah. I'm going home yeah. and what's going to make me have that support. Yeah. Make life a little bit easier for you. Yeah. And it does. Mm-hmm. I don't know what I, what I would do in a manual. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know how I would get up the ramp or ramp here at home. Mm-hmm. By myself. Okay. If I was in a manual wheelchair, I would need to call someone every time to just yeah. get in and out of my house. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's, yeah a big reason why I put myself out there. Mm -hmm. I just want to share the real parts about disability. Mm -hmm. Yes. That was scary at first to do. And then I got a message from someone that was like, I love how you share both the positive and the negative sides of that. Yeah. SCI. Mm -hmm. People don't mind the more vulnerable, like depressed little posed, but Mm -hmm. Maybe I shouldn't see it like that. I should see it like this is real. Like people feel this and it's okay to have like be grateful for the life you have and also know that it's still a struggle. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Like, like, you know, like I had to tell people. I don't even want to say it right now, but (laughs) I had to tell people there was a point in time I had to wear a diaper. All right. And it's just because I didn't. I like I said before, it would like I really couldn't I really couldn't just fathom having to do certain things. So I didn't want to do it and that led to a lot of accidents. It just led to me not having my bowel care and stuff under control. And you know, when I did that video, it was just I know it I knew it was somebody out there that was probably going through the same thing. And when I posted up the video, sure enough, people started hitting me up. And people asking me, oh, my man, look, I'm having a problem with bowel care. Like, can you help me out? Blah, blah, blah. And it's just, you know, I try to tell people, like, if you really having a problem, like, really ask me. Because sometimes people say that they need help. But then, but then once I actually write back and they're just probably shocked that I wrote back, they don't know what to say. And it's just, it's hard to so- sometimes say those personal things. But I try to tell people, like, if you need the information now, is the time to ask. So don't feel... Don't feel embarrassed. Like, it, I, it's okay. Like, I understand. I understand. Like, I'm going through the same struggle that you're going through, like, as far as, like, like pretty much, like, what to do. You know, so I, I try to tell people, hey, look, if, 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 you got, if, if you got questions, ask them. And if I can answer them, I'll answer them for you because I know what it feels like to not have the, the knowledge because, like, I, I wasn't the best prepared when I went home. And I was like rebelling against everything, so it was a struggle for me. And I didn't know a lot of things. I didn't know anybody in wheelchairs. I didn't know. I, I didn't know. But I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't start talking to people in wheelchairs until probably like Instagram, to like somebody might might have mm-hmm. wrote me. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't really talk to anybody in wheelchairs. Nobody I knew was in wheelchairs where I lived at. None of my friends, like just none of that. So it was just. It was kind of like foreign to me. And then at the same time, I felt like I kind of like stayed away from that too. So I felt like people wanted to reach out and I just, I didn't want to really accept the fact that I was in a wheelchair, I guess. And I felt like me talking to people in wheelchairs, it just, it's like, it hurt me because I could see myself in them because, you know, they're in a wheelchair, I'm in a wheelchair. So it's like, no matter what they look like, I could see myself in them. So it was like, literally, I was seeing myself in that wheelchair. And it's just like I did not for the longest time. I just did not want to. I did, I just didn't want to talk to people in wheelchairs. And I felt like it was like the biggest. It's one of the biggest regrets that I have to this day because I felt like it just it put my life on hold for a while. No, I can relate to that. If it was, that's why I always say like if it wasn't for Laura Beck messaging me back because mm-hmm. she was the only person I like felt strong enough to reach out to. I wouldn't. I was in the same boat as you that I didn't want to meet other wheelchair users. I didn't want to accept that like this was my life now. Mm-hmm. And if it wasn't for her messaging back, I probably I would have been like, okay, I tried. Yeah. Moving on, I probably would have never met. But then meeting her, and then she was with other people that, or she was with another girl that was in a wheelchair, and then my sister was with me. Mm-hmm. It was like, okay, it gave me that push that like, okay, yeah, you can okay. meet other people. We're pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. We're hey, look, every look, everybody, somebody. All right, mm-hmm. you know. So okay. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Now, d- do you have anything that you're working on right now? Um, I'm working on trying to be more active on my Instagram. Okay, that's me too. Me too. Me too. <laughs> me too. <laughs> also trying to study TikTok because okay, people say to keep getting on there, which I mm-hmm. like. TikTok. I am on TikTok. I do the dances and stuff. But okay, 
I could be more active, I guess. Okay, okay, okay. That's What's your TikTok name? name? The same as my Instagram. Okay. S16. Okay. My first last name and then the number 16. Okay. I'll be sure to post it up and everything. Okay. Yeah, now, was- now, you said that you love writing. Mm-hmm. Are you still writing? Please tell us you're writing. So... This is going to be sad. I mean, not for, I haven't written anything created creatively Okay. since I've been injured. Mm-hmm. Kind of had a creative rut. I do write, like okay. I journal and stuff, like my thoughts oh. and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, but nothing's still like mm-hmm. creative. I feel like I used to write a lot about like relationships and whatnot. Okay. And I feel like since I haven't like explored and been out in the real world, I've kind of just been like mm-hmm. trying to survive. <laughs> yeah. I haven't really written okay. anything, but I have been thinking about starting my blog back up. Okay. Because I did write like two after I had been injured and then I kind of just stopped, you know, mm. stuff. So just okay. like stopped writing. But yeah, I would like to start blogging again. I am working mm. on a, a brand, a clothing okay. brand. Okay. Okay. So Can you say the name? LL Official. LL Official. Okay. Right here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, yeah. what's that quote on it? Is it like a quote or a saying or a little rap verse or something? Like, what is it? Sort of like the mission of... Okay. The message I kind of want to get across. Okay. Brand, okay. I'm not, like, reading it. Let me... Go, go ahead and let us know. Let us know. It says... Right, let me try to read it. I don't want to, like, butcher it. It says, we are all human. Mm-hmm. Regardless of race, sexuality, disability, gender, religion, etc. We are all experiencing... Healing, learning, adapting, and growing, simply being human. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's kind of what we want to get across. That that's we're all just up. humans. Yeah. And we all just have different experiences. Because even I feel like um, disability, we all get tied together. Mm, yeah, exactly. Person, that, one, that one disabled person you know, that's every disabled person's story. Mm-hmm. Like, no, just like able bodied, just like our non disabled. Yeah, we have our own lived experiences too because we're human. I agree. I feel like when I became disabled, a lot of people just give me that dis- disabled narrative, and that's all I am now. Like, yep. you know, I feel that girl that likes music, that likes concerts, that's obsessed mm. with Justin Bieber, that <laughs> uh, okay, <laughs> that enjoys content creating. Like, I'm mm-hmm. not just a narrative anymore. Yeah, just because that's all you want to see me as because I'm in a chair now or whatever yeah. the case. Yeah, I, and you want to know what I just. I feel like, you know, because your sister said that she gets hate. I feel like I get hate too. It, it's just like they don't want to see you. They don't want to see you doing good. They don't want to see you smiling. Huh? I was doing the DJ Kelly. They don't want to see you succeed. They don't. And uh-huh. and like I feel like that. I feel like that they try to make you feel like, co- like cocky in a way because, you know, you're just living your life and say you might post up something and you're happy. It's like, they want to see you needing help. Yeah. They expect us to be disabled it, and miserable. Exactly. And it's just that people are just ignorant. You know, people are just not aware of spinal cord injuries. And they, and like you said, they just loop everybody in together and they think everybody needs help. They think every, you know, it's, and it's really not that way. You know, yeah, it's we're all different. We all come from different backgrounds. Different. Yeah. Um, disability narratives, if whatever exactly, we all have exactly. Like, not all disabled people are friends. <laughs> yeah, exactly, oh. exactly. And and you want to know what they think that because it's another person in the wheelchair. There, oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you know them, you know, or or you cool with them? Nah, we might not be cool. <laughs> yeah, like but, we're all so different too, just like you guys. Like, yeah, and that's why I'm like my message is always, and that was another reason why I started sharing too. Like. Yeah. We're all just human. I feel like people forgot that that we're all just human. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like my disability didn't make me any less human. It didn't turn me into an alien. Uh, exactly. That's how I feel like sometimes I get treated now, like by mm-hmm. people that know me and then like knew me from my past, and people that like see me on the street like strangers. I'm like, you guys are treating me as if I'm not like mm-hmm. here anymore. Like as if yeah, I'm like because nah. like true. it's wild it's like i'm just like my disability and that's it and it's like no i'm still yeah. a human experiencing yeah. life just like you exactly and i feel like that as i feel like at some level we all go through it like like all paraplegics or like everybody in wheelchairs i feel like we all go through some level of that 
You know, like it's going to be some point you're going to feel like the alien in the room. It's going to be some point in time where everybody's looking at you, oh, you yeah. know, and, and and it's, I don't know. I just had to learn, like, it, it is what it is. All yeah. right. It is what it is. The only thing I can do is look my best. I always <laughs> look- say this thing because I'm cute. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And and look, I just try to look my best. All right. <laughs> That's it. That's it. I'm so. going to be looking my best, but I'm still like, you're staring at me because I'm cute. <laughs> Okay, you know what? Now that you said that, now that you said that, I'm I'm curious. All right, I'm curious. I'm pretty sure the people are curious out there. What is your dating life like, or do you have a dating life? My dating or, life oh, is non-existent. Okay, okay. Well, uh, you know what? Are guys reaching out? Not see. There was a time when I was like going on the dating apps. Okay, I had like you know talked to a couple of dudes. Mm-hmm. You know, connected with them, whatever. Not like met, didn't yeah. never met with any of them in person, but just like you know, mm-hmm. getting to know each other, you know, online, whatever. Yeah. But then I just stopped because I'm I realized that I want to work on leveling myself up. You know, working on my clothing mm. brand. Okay. I I don't know. I just want to like. I was like, if it comes, maybe, and then the world shut down. You know, too. I feel like there's just a lot yeah. of obstacles that were telling me maybe dating just not in your cards right now. Yeah, exactly. It's, well, I kind of took a step back. I deleted all the dating apps. Okay. And I'm just kind of like working on me and we'll see if I download okay. the dating apps again because I'm not opposed to the dating apps. Okay. Okay. This, wasn't, this mm. wasn't working for me at the moment. Okay. Look, it's understandable. I think that's more because me mentally, I feel like I'm just not there yet. So like I'm not mm-hmm. even giving my attention to these dudes. So it's like yeah, you have people hitting you up and you're like not even responding. I'm like, why do I even have these apps downloaded? <laughs> yeah. I'm clearly not ready. <laughs> yeah. And trust me, I can understand when when you say that, you know, you just probably just need to work on yourself. Mm-hmm. You know? I feel like once I feel like I'm in a place where, like, I don't feel like my disabled narrative. Mm-hmm. I know that's like, I feel like that's a bad thing to say, but whatever. I'm just going to say it. I mm-hmm. feel like when I'm in a place where my mindset isn't thinking that my entire life is disabled stuff, mm-hmm. that I will be able to, like, focus on, okay. like, relationships. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. And But okay. I feel like I need to work on me first. Yeah. For sure. And- and like it's like you know, I feel like that. That's a question, not that I like to ask, but I feel like that's a question that I am curious about. Like because I, I, all of our situations are different, you know. And I guess I guess it's just you know. And then at the same time, you're a female too, so you know. I guess it's like curious, like you know, like somebody who got paralyzed young. Like I would ask them, how was it going through school, you know? Because I I didn't have to experience that. Like I did go to college, but you know, college is a little bit different, you know, like, especially going to college in a wheelchair. I didn't go through high school or middle school in a wheelchair. Like some people had, had to, you know, so those experiences are going to be different. So it was just genuinely something that I was just pretty, pretty much curious about. And maybe I guess I wanted to see how guys are like responding. Like, like so as far, far the guys that like, I felt to, they've all been like, they seem understanding. Like I said, I've never mm-hmm. met with any person though. So I wonder yeah. how that would be. Okay. But, I'll come back on your podcast when I do have a date and we can talk all about it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, then. All right. I'll all give right, you all so. the dating advice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know what? Yeah. You know what? I would definitely like to do that. I would definitely like to do that because, like, I do these videos, but this isn't the only time I want to talk to y'all. Like, I would definitely love to have people back on, talk about different topics, like, just come up with, you know, like, just different things to talk about, you know, because I feel like that there's a lot of things that, you know, is it's like you don't have to say it, but it's kind of understood. You know, like I like like I guess I guess I guess I got like not that much backlash from it, but the video that I, me and my wife put up the other day, and we was like, "Are people in wheelchairs easy targets?" Like I feel like that people they understand it, but they didn't want me to say it. And mm-hmm. I feel like, yeah, and I feel like if they don't want me to say it, like it's me not saying it is like the information really not getting out there because, you know, like I see people like there are some people in witches that are really flashy and I can be flashy sometimes. And it really makes you an easy target to somebody who just doesn't give a fuck for real, for real. Like it, like, like, cause if you, if you snatch whatever I got on my, my lap, I'm not about to run after you. Yeah. You know, like, you know, if you try to rob me, it's only so much I can do. Mm-hmm. You know, so I just try, you know, I, I just try to get the information out there that you just got to be self aware that you are an easy target. All right. Like, it's a, it's a lot easier to get you than it is to get somebody else. So I just try to tell people to look, just stay on, just stay on your, your P's and Q's and everything. So, all 
Mm-hmm. And I guess I get... isn't going to care if you're in a wheelchair or not. They're just trying exactly. to get what they're trying to get. Exactly. 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 I, I get scared because like, I know I can't defend myself anymore. I mm-hmm. get scared, but at least my chair goes pretty fast. So <laughs> hopefully no one can get me. Okay. Okay. Now, this is something else that I'm curious about because for me and my wheelchair, since I use a manual wheelchair, the biggest problem that I have with my wheelchair has to be the brakes. What's the biggest problem that you have to deal with when it comes to your wheelchair, since this is a power wheelchair? My wheelchair, the biggest thing so far is the footrest. I don't know okay. what, what's wrong with my footrest, if they did it wrong, but it constantly falls off. Okay. Fixed now probably like two or three times. Mm-hmm. Um, but other than that, nothing too major. Mm-hmm. It's just like keeping up with like the little things, like the battery. Okay. I guess it's not a little thing. It's a pretty important thing. But mm-hmm. Changing out the battery, the wheels. Okay. But nothing's really like too frustrating. But but the okay. footrest that keeps falling off. Okay. Yeah, my brakes just, they just kept breaking. So it was like, I, yeah, so it was like, it, they just kept snapping. I, I had the uh, the D's brakes. Like, I guess that's what they call them. And like, but they was always snapping on me. So I would have one brake that worked and one that didn't. And then like it, like it made transfers hella dangerous because now your wheelchair is moving, you know? So I guess I was just curious. I would just, I would just want to know. I would like, I guess, I guess me thinking about a power wheelchair, I would think that the biggest problem would probably be the battery or something, yeah. you know, or like me or the battery. Yeah. The overcharge or undercharge. Okay. Like last okay. night, I didn't charge my wheelchair, so I'm a little scared today that it's gonna die. But oh, I think fine. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, now I ain't gonna keep you too much longer, but I did want to share something with you because it was a young lady I spoke to before, not too long ago. Actually, the video dropped yesterday. I mean today, it, it dropped today, and she has a blog as well. It's called it's it's called the Unveiled. I'll share it with you, and it's definitely a good read if you like to read. It's definitely a good read, and, you know, she goes into detail about her incident and everything. So, you know, if you ain't watched the video, you know, you go check out her podcast, too. But right. trust say, me. My sister's I mean, I mean, her, her blog. Did, like, me to you and, like, knew mm-hmm. heard of you and stuff. So yeah. I'm still, like, learning about you just now, too. So I'm going to, like, watch your YouTube channel and okay. try to do some research on you, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> but but I'll definitely share her blog with you because – uh. You said you like writing, and I figured that, that maybe like, this is something that, you know, y'all two can probably relate to. I don't know. Y'all might become friends or something like that. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe she might be afraid of Exactly. Exactly. So, um, we definitely look forward to, you know, seeing you getting back in the swing of things as far as writing. All right. I'm definitely going to link y'all, y'all YouTube channel down there in the description box below. So, make sure y'all go check them out. All right. And we definitely looking forward to seeing y'all do some big things in the future. And oh, yeah, look, I can't sure. wait. I can't wait. I Me can't too. wait. I can't wait. And I just want to say thank you for coming on the podcast. Like, it really means a lot because, like I said, like, just me reaching out and then y'all responding back. It just, I don't know. I guess it just made my day, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. So, I appreciate it. I Like, I really do appreciate it because, like, I don't know. It really does take a lot for me to really reach out to somebody. Oh, and I like, get that. So. In the same way. Mm-hmm, I don't so. stage dry because I don't like to talk to people very often. I get, me like, either. anxiety around it. Me, you know what? I feel the same way too. Like, like I really, I don't, like, I just, I just don't talk to people. Like, I really don't. Like, I really feel like I could have fun all by myself. And, and it's like, it's like, I don't know if it's a problem, but I, but deep down, I know it. It really is. Like, like it really is a problem. Like, like, like for real, for. But to me, I don't feel like it's a problem. Like, I could literally just turn up by myself. Like I don't know. I I guess that's just how I am. I don't know. I don't you know. know but I but I've been trying to reach out. I love being alone. I yeah. love my own company because there's like no judgment, and yeah. you're able to listen to any music you want and watch whatever you want and hey, yeah. do whatever you want. Exactly. You pick the movie. Ain't nobody asking for the aux cord. It's like you're listening to what you want to listen to. If you want to listen to the same t- song five times in a row, you right. can. <laughs> you, yo, that's me too. That, trust me, that's me. So. Look. 
and it, and like, I ain't gonna lie. Sometimes I be talking to myself. Like, and it's not like I be talking to myself. It just I just be talking out loud. So people think I be yeah. talking to myself, and I don't be talking about. I just be talking out loud. So I don't know. But I really wanted to thank you for coming on my podcast, and I can't wait till we, you know, do the video with you know you and your sister. So I can't yeah. wait for it. Uh, just um, I'll stay in touch with y'all so we can go ahead and like you know I like figure out a, uh, a time and everything. But like I said, look, I appreciate you yeah. coming on. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it thank you. Conversation. Mm -hmm. I was nervous because, like I said, I don't really like talking to people. So I was okay. Like, yeah, and I heard Nikki talking a lot, and I was like, I hope I give him enough information that he wants. <laughs> hey, look, we got it out of you somehow. You, you know, like, look, look, we've been on for an hour and 40 minutes, so. Oh, wow. Yeah, we good. Talking to me. I know, me too. I'm out for the day. <laughs> <laughs> what are you studying for right now? Well, it's actually, it's, I'm working with a mentor. Okay. To, that's helping me start my clothing brand. So. For real? I call it class just because it's like easier than saying I'm working with a mentor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Monday. And for real. All and right. It's me and two other girls in the class, or not two other girls, me and just one other girl in the class, and then the instructor. Mm -hmm. Very intimate. Very nice. We get a lot done. Today we're supposed okay. to be working on a website, so it'll be fun. Okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. Like I said, we look forward to seeing it. We look forward to seeing it. But look out for it. All right, we will. We will uh, what's the name again? LL Official. LL Official. All right, better though. That's what's up. That's what's up. Thank you for coming on. Real for real. For having me. All right.